Greetings and welcome to Prayer for America and the Nations. I'm Walter Zagrevich, and today I'm being joined by Reverend Marcy Lavaki and by you. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for joining us on Prayer for America and the Nations. We are here to pray for you, and we take prayer seriously. Tune in every day, Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. East Coast time, and that would be at 7 p.m. in most of Europe, 8 p.m. in Ukraine, 9 p.m. in Moscow, that region of Russia, and it would be at uh, 6 p.m. in the United Kingdom. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for agreeing with us in prayer for revival in America and revival in the nations of the world. Please share this broadcast. Take a quick moment right now. It just takes a second to press that little share button right now. And that way your friends, your loved ones could also be a part of what God is doing around the world. And if they have needs, is it, this is a good place to tune in as we give encouraging words on how to believe, how to trust God, how to pray. And we do pray for your needs. If you have a need, feel free to write us right now. You could even put it in the comments if you like. And let me tell you, we do pray for those needs that we receive. Well, welcome, Sister Marcy. Thank you so much. I count it a privilege to be with you, Brother Walter. Thanks for uh, inviting me. And also, we welcome you back to the United States of America. You've been <laughs> away in Ukraine, in Poland, in Romania, probably in some other places, in England, and uh, you and your wife. And we're so glad to have you back. And also, uh, we greet all the viewers right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you. And it is good to be back in the United States. Uh, we do miss our uh, uh, fellow brothers and sisters and colleagues in the work of the Lord in Ukraine and in Poland and uh, in the United Kingdom. Uh, but, you know, um, we are glad to be home. It is uh, good to be here for a few weeks. And I say only a few weeks because we're going to be heading overseas again. We're heading to Cuba next. And do pray for that upcoming pastor's conference in Havana, Cuba. We um, are uh, expecting a great move of God. And we do need prayer for that. Uh, Cuba is still a communist nation. We're getting special permissions to be able to conduct this pastor's conference. And we do need your prayers that all things do line up uh, and, and work out as they are being planned. And we know they will because God is, answers prayer and because God is will is that the word should go forth and be broadcast in the nations of the world. So thank you. Thank you, Sister Marcy. And I know that um, you and others have prayed for us. I want to thank you and thank all of those who have prayed for us on this journey. And yes, we do miss uh, that fellowship with our brothers and sisters, whom you know, uh, you've met uh, these past, most of these pastors and bishops there in Ukraine. And I just wrote an article uh, for, uh, for an, a Christian newspaper in Taiwan. And uh, one of the things that I uh, was asked to comment on is how we found things there in Ukraine. And let me tell you, uh, if I could just sum it up in a, nuts uh, in a nutshell, it's um, these pastors, these leaders, they are steadfast, they are immovable, they are persevering, and they have uh, uh, just uh, a daunting faith as they move forward, uh, reaching the gospel and hearing their testimonies and speaking to them. It appears that most, if not all, had had opportunities to leave the country. In fact, in some cases, their friends or relatives abroad tell them, leave, leave, there's war. But they prayed and they said, no, God spoke to us, we must stay. 
and we must stay the course here, minister to the flock and also minister to the commun community. And so if I were uh, to just to sum it up in a nutshell, these men and women of God, they are steadfast, uh, they are persevering, and they definitely are uh, uh, on target with, uh, with doing what God has called them to do, despite the fact that in their cities, they are getting rockets, they're getting mortar shells, uh, and uh, some of them pretty much on a daily basis, but they are they are continuing to work for the Lord, yeah, but it was um, wonderful to be with them for a few days. It was a break for them from the air raid sirens, from the uh, 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 constant shelling. And so they were so thankful, so appreciative for a few days of rest that we were able to uh, afford them by um, inviting them to this pastor's retreat that we took care of them to help them with their transportation. Some of them came with their wives and a few of them brought children as well because it was not safe for them to leave them behind at home. But it was so wonderful to be with them, to have this, this family atmosphere and uh, to spend a time of encouraging encouragement, encouraging them, praying for them, praying with them, and just fellowshipping with them. It was a very good time. And I'm sure, Sister Marcy, you would have very much enjoyed it uh, had you been able to go there. Um, and challenging to get there because there are no flights <laughs> to Ukraine. And I think Nina told you a bit about our 12-hour uh, van journey with uh, about 10 uh, uh, times with the van just dying out on us on the roads. But, uh, but God kept us, God protected us, and God blessed in a wonderful, wonderful way. Uh, Sister Marcy, back to you here. Yes, well, I was going to share something that I noticed in the body of Christ. I get many, many, many calls and spend like sometimes hours and a whole day on, on the phone ministering to people, to Christian people. Um, what I notice is there's a lack of confidence in the body of Christ, a lack of confidence in prayer, in the faith walk. And so I would like to share a few things. I, I think I'll start a series on, and I hope you, Brother Walter, will help me to get, you know, get it on YouTube so people can watch it. I'd like to do a daily series for a couple weeks. There's a lot to cover and it helps. For example, people pray and, 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 and then they somehow walk around and think, well, I got to pray again. I got to pray again because I guess God didn't hear me. They don't say it, but that's kind of what you believe, that God didn't hear you. And uh, God brought to me in the middle of the night. Some nights I don't sleep because I'm preaching, you know, into the ceiling as I'm laying there. Um, God brought to me this um, situation where Daniel prayed for his nation. Think of it. We're praying for our nation. We're praying for Canada. We're praying for Central and South America. We're praying for Asia. We pray for people in the Ukraine. We pray for, for Europe. We pray for Africa. We pray around the world that God would undertake because the whole world needs God. For God so loved the world. The world. All at once, he loves the whole world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Yeah. So God is a world God. God loves the world. But Daniel prayed for his nation. He fasted and he set himself, sanctified himself to seek the Lord about his nation. And what happened was when he prayed, there's no answer. As we would think, well, I prayed, why isn't God changing this? Why is God doing this in my life, in our nation, or in our family, or marriage, or whatever business, whatever you're into? And here are some thoughts 
Daniel was Daniel was a faithful man. The Bible says that he said that the, the, the people who do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. And I think that describes you and Nina and your team uh, that Albert went with you, I believe, that as you, you were, you're very strong to go at this time when the war is not finished, where there's still a lot of danger. And because you, you fit this, the people that know their God shall be strong and do exploits. And so Daniel continued to pray. The angel came to him and said, the moment you prayed, the day that you set aside to begin to pray for your nation, that's the day God heard your prayer and answered it. He answered it. He mm -hmm. sent the answer. But there was resistance in a spirit realm. Uh, the king of Persia and his spiritual, whatever, voodooism, he was hindering the answer from coming. And Daniel waited. He didn't call it a day until he saw the results of his prayers. He, like God did, God said, let there be light. And he didn't call it a day right away. He didn't call it a day until he saw the results of his words, of his prayer or words or declaration or sowing the seed. And so we call our day too soon. We're like, okay, I pray, that's it. You know, God didn't answer. He guess he's not answering prayers. And then people get mad at God. I've, I've had people, friends who I'm mad with God. And, I, and I'm like, oh my God, you're cutting off the very source of your answer, of your sustenance, of your life. I don't, I don't get it. I just don't get it. I don't get it. Why would you get mad at God? Get mad at yourself. Maybe you did something dumb. I'm God. You see, I always look at myself like, okay, Lord, what did I do? Show me, show me, show me how I let this devil in here, how I did this, how I did this. So Daniel didn't blame, blame God. He just kept on praying because he knew that when he prays, God hears. 1 John 5, I, I, I just believe that Daniel read this in the New Testament. 1 John 5, verse 14 and 15. And this is the confidence that we have in him. Mm, Jesus, thank you, Lord. Confidence is the word that is an operative word right here. This is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask any Thing. Now listen to this. If we ask anything, I'm going to read this over and over until it burns into your spirit. If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. How hard is that? Hmm. Do you have to yell? No. Do you have to cry? No. Yeah, you could yell, cry, and do whatever you want, but pray in God's will. Amen. Find out from the word. Find out who God is. God is peace. God is love. God is joy. God is success. God leads us in triumph. God made us more than conquerors. And sometimes we as conquerors are laying down and, and, and panting like a dog and not being and not conquering. But you're still a conqueror. Even if you're not conquering, you're still a conqueror, conqueror laying down on your pillow. And that's why God says, arise, and then you'll shine. Arise. Because the minute you arise, you are a conqueror. Hallelujah. Take that position of a conqueror. You have to take the position of the victory you're looking forward to. If I want to sleep, I don't stand up on my two feet and, and, and look in a window and I'm going to fall asleep. I take the position of a person who wants to sleep. When I lay down, then I fall asleep. When I want to preach, I don't sit somewhere uh, in a cloak, uh, in poor they put co uh, coats and, and hangers and everything. I don't sit in a closet and shut the door and say, well, I don't know why God's not anointing me. He doesn't anoint you until you get behind the pulpit and until you open your mouth, then the anointing of the Holy Ghost comes on you to preach because you took the position. It's a position of faith. 
And so he says, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he already heard you. You don't have to go, God, hear me. No, just ask in his will. And he heard you right there. Our daughter was healed of an eye problem because of this verse. And she was only six years old. And I knelt on the floor with her beside a coffee table. And I asked her and said, I called her name and said, do you think God lies? She said, no, mom. I asked her that question like six or 10 times. I said, are you sure he doesn't lie? No, he doesn't. Maybe he started to lie right now. He said, anything we ask, he hears us, but maybe he lied. Did he lie? No, he didn't lie. Then what he said here, if he doesn't lie, then what he said here is true. Yes, mom. And she got healed. She got healed. She got healed. And if we know that he hears us, verse 15 now, you should get your Bibles. By now, you should have had your Bibles out so you can mark it down, so you can read it, or your notepad and mark it down. And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. He said, if we know that he hears us, how do we know that he hears us? Because we prayed in, we prayed in his will. We prayed his will. His will is to heal you. His will is to help you. His will is to make you that more than conqueror that you are, to help you up with that. He said, he always leads us in triumph, whatever area of your life, and see who our God is and how he loves and how he wants us to, and died on the cross to make us victorious. And so here's the confidence that we have that we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. Our daughter, I told her, I said, your move is to believe that God hears you because he wants to heal you. That's his will. And now he said to receive it while you are praying. That's in Mark 11, 22, 23, and 24. While you are praying, receive when you pray, not after you pray. When you pray, you receive it. And the manifestation now is God's turn. You did your turn. You prayed. You believed. You asked. And you're thanking the Lord that he heard you. And now it's his turn. You've moved your chip on the board. And now you're looking at God saying, God, now it's your turn. And God took his turn. And God healed her in two weeks. I told her, I said, you, you, you just, we receive while we pray. God doesn't lie. He said that. Okay. So start thanking him. So we thank him every day. Thank you, Lord, for healing. Thank you, Lord, for the healing. Thank you, Lord. Now, can I read Isaiah 55, verse 11? So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in a thing where to I sent it. Now you just think of that. He said in 1 Peter 2, 24, by his stripes you were healed. Either he lies or he tells the truth. You know, there was a lady that uh, called me and said to me, I pray every day and I even fast and pray. And I even go to the church and kneel down at the altar and I pray. And it's so cold in there and I'm hungry and I'm tired and sick and everything else. And God's not answering prayer. And I said, then one of you is lying. Either God is lying or you're lying. I don't know. You decide who that is. That thing changed. <laughs> I left it like that, just hanging. And I said, I don't know. I'm not going to judge. You decide. Because God doesn't lie. 
When he said, you prayed my will, I heard you. But then you say, well, why 21 days? Well, there was a hindrance. And sometimes the hindrance or the time element. I remember <clears throat> one of the girls in Bible school prayed for a husband and, and uh, she had to wait a whole year, didn't meet this man for a whole year. He was there in the school, but she couldn't see him for some reason. She didn't fall in love with him. Somehow nothing happened. And um, after they got married, he said, he said, you know what? I'm so happy you never noticed me because had you noticed me, you would have rejected me because I was not up to par, was not in style. My hair cut wasn't right. My, I was losing weight. I was doing everything. See, God was preparing him. God has to sometimes change circumstances in order to download the miracle that he has for you. Maybe right now you can't receive the miracle. Why? Because he asked you to go and get empty vessels, not a few, and you're not getting any vessels. You're just crying and praying instead of going and getting empty vessels. Empty place. An empty place. Maybe like Cuba. Empty. See? And you and Nina have always, you've always done it your whole life. I've, I've seen it. But we've traveled together a little bit. And I've seen it, how you just believe God. You just go and, and, and prepare the empty vessels. And then God provides the multiplication of the little oil that we have, the little money that we have, the little sermon that we have, the little seed. Today, I saw somebody who's running for the president standing beside his mommy, his mother. And his mother is so small. And I thought, this big man was inside of her. Hmm. Was inside of her as a seed. And I looked at her and I thought, you tiny little platform. You launched forth because you believed in the seed. You launched forth this big, giant man. Strong, powerful, powerful voice. Man of God. Wow. Isn't that how we do ministry, Brother Walter? We think, I, I have just, sometimes you have a lot to share. Sometimes you have almost nothing to share. You're like, I don't know, this is, and I feel like it's not, it's not. And God says, just, just trust me, just trust me. Just, just trust me with that little seed. Trust me with that little oil. What do you have in your house? Oh, just a little bit, little flask of oil. And he, God says, that's, that's all we need, just a little flask of oil. Prepare empty vessels. Go borrow, borrow empty vessels. What do you need that for? I need it because God's going to fill it with oil. Oh, hallelujah. And the more empty vessels we can find, if you know if that lady would have given a thousand empty vessels, that oil would have never quit, but go on and on and on. That oil, oil quit at the end of her faith where she stopped and said, okay, 10 vessels, that's enough. How about if she had 20? How about if she had 30? How about if she had 100, 200? The oil would have continued to pour. The harvest is plenteous. But the laborers who sow the seed are few. So God wants you to begin to believe God and think of Daniel 21 days. He did not call it a day. Do not call it a day until you see the results of your declaration of faith in the will of God. Don't call it a day. Don't say this is day one. No, it's, no, I'm not calling it a day. No, I'm not going to day two. This is day one until I get the answer. Amen. Amen. I, I think, yes, amen. And I think you've uh, touched on several very important points here. One, uh, the 
prayer by Daniel. And some people think, well, he didn't get the reply, but right away. Well, but the reply was sent right away. But what I point out to believers today, that Daniel lived before Christ had come. Christ has since come, and he has given us the authority of the use of his name, the power to use his name. And we cannot separate his name from his person. When we speak the name of Jesus, the person of Jesus Christ is backing up that name, is standing right there behind that name. And so when we pray, Jesus taught us in the New Testament to pray to the Father in his name, according to God's will, of course, but to the Father in his name. And there's no demon, there's no devil that can stop God. Uh, he could never stop God, uh, God's work or God's answer before, but more so since Christ has come and he has defeated the devil. And when we pray in his name, there's no demon, there's not no devil that can stop that prayer, number one, from reaching God, secondly, from that answer, from coming back to God. But you also pointed out some very important things here. You know, there are things that the scripture already establishes as fact, that by the stripes of Jesus Christ, we were healed. That's already uh, something that he has paid for, he has provided for, just like he paid for and provided for salvation. So we must take that by faith. Now, there is the other aspect which you had mentioned. Sometimes God, you know, we pray for something that requires things to be put into motion, or it's like a seed that is planted and needs to grow and develop into that answer. And so uh, sometimes we just throw everything into one uh, basket, so to speak, and yet that is, uh, it's very important that as you were clarifying that some things God had to prepare, God had to work out. We have been praying for America and for revival. We have been praying for exposure of corruption that it would be dealt with. Well, we never thought or imagined how bad things were. Uh, and uh, it seems like uh, we get more and more and more information that just get, uh, paints a horrible, horrible picture of things that were taking, uh, were happening behind the scenes. Now, we can get upset about that right this moment. But the fact is that these things have already occurred. These things occurred maybe a year ago, half a year ago, two, three, who knows how many years back. The thing is that we have been praying, and now these things are coming forth. Things are being exposed. Because sometimes God has to put things together, has to deal with this one, with that one. God gives people uh, an opportunity to repent. God gives people an opportunity to change their lifestyle. At a certain point, well, judgment falls. And I think that's where we're coming to right now, where people have refused to uh, uh, to, to repent, have refused to uh, follow God's ways. And so we're beginning to see, I think we're going to begin to see more of the judgment of God fall on certain individuals, and, 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 and that is because of the steps that they've taken. Maybe it's uh, something that they've done a while ago, but they persisted in that when God was giving him grace to repent and come to him. So there is, as you said, the seed factor. And uh, when we pray or when we do something that is uh, God asks us to do, we're planting a seed, and we expect to see that uh, that bush, uh, that strawberry plant to produce strawberries the next day. It doesn't. Kids like to think of it that way. Tell them, you're going to put the seed in the ground, and you're going to get strawberries. Really? Okay, they put it in the ground the next day. I don't see any strawberries. <laughs> well, well, you know that better than I do, Sister Marcy. You grew up in Canada, at least by the time you, uh, your, your parents had a farm. Your dad had a farm, and so you know better than I do do how things are there is uh, you plant seeds it doesn't come out the next day but eventually you have a harvest and let me tell you i believe it's also harvest time right now and we're seeing harvest time around the world and um, and that's the other thing sister marcy i think in prayer sometimes we get so um 
so into our own needs and our own particular individual situation. And yes, God knows your needs and my needs and the needs of every individual. And God wants to meet those needs. However, there are certain things that are related to the body of Jesus Christ. And so it's not... Um, just me, myself, and I. It's me as part of the greater body of Jesus Christ. What is God trying to do with the church? Where is God trying to move us as, as the, his body on earth? And so we're, we're thinking of just my little situation here. And I don't mean to belittle the needs of anyone, because to you, it's a huge need right now. You're facing an insurmountable, what seems to be an insurmountable situation or a mountain or a need that you don't know how you're going to pay for those bills. You don't know how you're going to take care of your kids. And yes, those are important things for you right now. And God knows that and God will supply those needs if we ask him to, and we involve him in our lives and we do what he tells us to do. It's like uh, brother Tony, sometimes I've seen him uh, pray for people and say, you know, you that know, you don't want a financial breakthrough or uh, a better job. Well, you know, we'll pray for you, but tomorrow morning you get out there, start looking for that better job. You know, you don't just sit back and say, well, I didn't get Get a job. You got to get out there and look for it, you know, and, and and believing that God will open a better door for you, a a a job where you will have better pay, a better situation, and and so um, there is the praying part. There is the putting the faith into action part. And there is that patience uh, of believing God and trusting God in the middle of, uh, of God answering that prayer. Uh, isn't that so, Sister Marcy? Amen. Amen. That is so true. And I, I just believe that when you were talking about that, about Daniel again, uh, it was because he was praying for a nation. We're praying for a nation. Mm -hmm. And he says this king of Persia was probably, well, of course he was the king. He was the ruler. And so when we have a king that is not serving God, he, uh, he can hinder a lot. And that's why we need to con constantly have the confidence that we're praying for God to change this around. God is, I don't know how to explain it, hatching the eggs. Mm -hmm. but you don't see the little chickens yet the little chicks but don't worry because in god's timing you know herod had to die before joseph and mary can come back and be free somebody gave them the message that herod the one who wanted to kill all the little boys he died we don't know what's going to happen but we're not in charge of that. God has to do something. And we're petitioning him on the behalf of our nation that things will change so that we don't just, you know, go the wrong way. I have a teaching here that, that I want to do when I, when you help me, Brother Walter, to, I want to do Facebook Live and then teach, but I just wanted to give a little title here. And I wrote, and I've given this message out in Africa to big churches to have 10,000 people and so on. The pastor was there and he said, can I have that message? I gave it to him. In order to accomplish God's will in your life, you must, one, two, three, four, five, and six. You must, first of all, first point, I'll just give one point and I'm not going to illustrate. Use what you have right now. Mm -hmm. Do what you can right now recognize the kingdom of God is at hand. In other words, within your reach. The kingdom or the rule of God is within your reach. Number, not, not, not quite yet. Uh, Walter wants, my husband wants to come and say hi to you after I'm finished. Okay, <laughs> that sounds good. Yeah. Number, number four, quit making excuses. Moses tried it. God wasn't impressed at all. And then I have illustrations and more explanations and then number five learn how to deal with impossibilities impossibilities are god's platforms for miracles that's so all they are things look impossible hey that's god's platform he doesn't work he doesn't work miracles where things are possible for you that you can do it and it comes to pass 
But when you're at the end of your rope, God is just at the beginning of his miraculous power. And so I just pray that God will help you to find time to listen as I teach. And I will announce it for the world. You can announce, help me because he's, you've got a, a good following that we can do a, a, maybe a weekly, maybe twice a week, put it on YouTube. And so you can check in, tell your friends and get your Bible and your notebook and make notes and follow up, follow up, follow up, follow up. Do you know how many scriptures I read just on the subject of praise, like a thousand? I go through each one, how they're set, why it says that, and the background of it, the context of it. And God begins to reveal, but there's work to be put in, like you said, Brother Walter. You want a job, but you're sitting at home and eating uh, popcorn. You're not going to get a job like that. You want to preach? When I uh, knew the call of God in my life, when I was in grade four, I made, I prepared a sermon, how to get saved. I could preach a sermon. It is so good. It's amazing. But I knew I had to go to Bible school. And I sat in the foyer of our house. I dressed up Sunday morning. That was the big the first day of, of, uh, of course, Bible school. They had, you know, like a conference and whatever, you know, starting of the Bible school. And I knew it. And I sat there and nobody was up. Eight of us in our family, mom and dad, that's 10. I'm dressed. I have a little suitcase. And I said, I'm going, God, I'm going to Bible school. I knew I had to go. I heard God's voice. And I said, if nobody gives me a ride, I'll walk. And you will somehow provide a ride for me. I've seen you do miracles. At that young age, I wasn't even 20 years old. But God provided a ride miraculously. Spoke to somebody who said no. And finally they said yes, because God did it. I will never forget that. That miracle of the impossibility of going 80 miles and I would walk and I decided said, God, within half, I just give you half an hour. I don't know why I was so perky right there. I just said, God, I give you half an hour to fix this. After half an hour, I'm going outside and I'm going to walk with my little suitcase, 80 miles. Somehow I'll make it. And I'm going to obey you because you told me to go. But God provided the right. I didn't have to walk. But for me, I already walked. You see that? I already did it. For you, when you're asking for that job, like you said, Brother Walter, you already have that job. And now you go looking, where's that job? God has a job for me. Now let me go and find it. When we started the church, we needed a building. I said, we're going to, ever, after work, every evening, we're going to go in a car and look for the building. Well, how do you know it's there? God is a boss that knows what he's doing. He knows everything, the end from the beginning. Hallelujah. He knows the beginning. He knows the end. He knows the middle. And so God already has the building. He, he's the one who's starting this church. I'm not. He's working through me. And so if we have a church, we have a building somewhere. And we went, and the very first day we went, there was a sign. And the Holy Ghost said, right there in that real estate building, you start the church. And now the church is built for 400 people or 300 people. It's there because of the prophetic word of the Lord. Because God knows what he's doing. And so when God urges you to do something, you will know when it's God. When it's God, you have faith. See, I had faith that I'm going to walk and somebody will give me a right. When you hear God, the Bible says Romans 1 or Romans 10, 17. When you hear God, you will have faith. If you're struggling with your faith, you're not listening to God. Do you know why so many times people are frustrated? Because they're telling God what to do, but they're not listening to God, what he's telling them to do. 
oh God, just heal over here and do that and do this and do this. Well, then you're, you're Lord. He's not Lord. When he's Lord, you follow his instructions. And it works. If it's not working, maybe it's because you're the boss. And he's not. So stop and go to him and say, Lord, I'm going to wait on you. I need to hear from you. Put some food away. Put some, sanctify yourself, set yourself apart and say, Lord, I'm going to seek your face. I need to hear from you. God wants to speak to you more than you want to hear him. Like parents want to speak to the kids more than they want to hear the parents. That's how God is. He's a parent. He's a father. And he'll speak to you and instruct you and you move in faith. Amen. Man, well, God answers prayer. And as you began in the very beginning, if we ask, this is the confidence that we have in him. First John 5, 14 and 15, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. We doesn't say we might have, we could have, we have. It's affirmative. We have. So believe that. Trust God. Uh, as Sister Marcy has pointed out uh, to that person that claimed that uh, God wasn't answering prayer. Well, um, he said, well, either you're lying or God is lying. And God does not lie. His word is true. If he said it, I believe it. And let me tell you, I recommend that you believe it too. <laughs> and we have experienced God in our lives, and you can experience God in your life. You can have what the Bible refers to as the born again experience. Perhaps you're listening to this conversation, you're hearing about prayer, but you don't know Christ as your Savior yet. You've you've been to church, or maybe you know about church, maybe you haven't. But let me tell you, Christ died on the cross, taking your place, dying for you and for me, that you and I might have salvation, deliverance from sin, from all the works of the devil. He came to destroy the works of the devil. So he offers you salvation. He offers you eternal life, life without end in the presence of of God. And you can have that simply by believing on Jesus Christ and inviting him into your life and saying, Lord Jesus, I admit that I'm a sinner. Forgive me all of my sins. Come into my heart. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. If you do that right now, sincerely, Christ come, is coming into your heart right now. And he has forgiven you of all your sins. It's that simple. No, it's not complicated. It's that simple. And if you've done that, do three things every day. Talk to him. He wants you to talk with him. Express your needs. Express your love to him. Your praise to him. And you don't know how to pray. Well, just say, dear Lord Jesus, help me today. And you will converse more and more with him as you develop your conversation, your prayer life in the Lord. Secondly, let him talk to you. Read his word, the Bible. He's rec it's recorded, it's written, and there's a, it's, his word is infallible. Take God's word at, exactly for what it says. Read God's word, believe God's word, and this will transform your way of thinking, your way of living, and uh, you will better understand who you are now in Jesus Christ, because you've invited him into your life. And thirdly, talk to others about him. Let people know that you are a follower of Jesus. And so very important, find a Bible preaching, Bible believing church where you begin to attend on a regular basis because you need to grow in your newfound faith. Uh, Sister Marcy, there are people that have tuned in 
that need healing in their bodies or need a breakthrough, whether it be financial breakthrough or some area of their life, would you pray for those people right now? Dear Father God, we come to you in the name of Jesus, the name that is above every name, the name that is above all the sickness that's speaking to people and saying, I'm here and I'm going to hurt you, harm you. In the name of Jesus, we pray and we believe and we lay hands on you as it were, and we ask God to touch you and heal you right now. Receive the miracle that you need. All you need to do is decide and say, I believe right now. I believe I receive see right now the bible says that we receive what we believe so when you believe that you receive healing healing will be yours in jesus powerful name amen and amen amen, amen. believe that receive right now wherever you're at and release your faith believe mm -hmm. that god has mm -hmm. heard your prayer sister marcy's prayer our prayer together believe that right now and release your faith what does that mean? Try to do what you could not do before if it's a matter of healing, testing your faith, testing yourself, putting your faith into action. I should say not testing your faith, but putting your faith into action, trying to, for example, if you couldn't raise up your arm, just begin to lift that up, not just once, but just keep putting it as you extend your arm, you're putting your faith into action and you We'll see the manifestation of that healing in your body right now. And if you needed a breakthrough in finances, a breakthrough in another mm. area of your life, Father, in the name of Jesus, we break that curse mm. poverty over your people. Mm. Jesus' name, we declare that we are not under the curse. We are blessed. We are children of the King, Jesus Christ. And we are blessed. We are a blessed nation. We are blessed people. And so we bind and break that curse in Jesus' name. And we release the blessings of God into the lives of your people that are tuning in right now in Jesus' holy name. Amen and amen. Praise God. Sister Marcy, we have been praying. We continue to pray for America. And just before we do that, I just want to say to those that have tuned in, we're on here Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. East Coast time. We call the broadcast Prayer for America and the Nations. We began this broadcast seeing the need for revival in this nation, but we soon realized that revival is needed in all nations. And so we are praying not only for America, we are praying for Canada, for Mexico, for Central and South America, for the Caribbean nations, for the African continent, for Asia, for Europe, for the Middle East, for every part of the world. And so wherever you may be at, you may be in the South Pacific, you may be at the Canary Islands, you may be there in Madrid, Spain, Jesus loves you where you're at. Join us here as we continue to pray for needs, as we continue to give words of encouragement and explaining uh, prayer, answer to prayer, because oftentimes people do not understand uh, how prayer works, how to pray. And as Sister Marcy alluded earlier, some people just beg. You don't have to beg. God loves you. God cares for you. He's already made promises to you. You can simply come to God as a friend and remind him of his promised blessings and thank him for those. He knows your needs before you even express them. But I want to mention that we uh, continue to work in the nations of the world. We've just returned from Ukraine and Poland and the UK. We are heading to Cuba in just a few weeks. We do covet your prayers and your support is needed to do what we are doing in the nations of the world. We're continuing to help those pastors in the front lines. Also, when I say we're helping the pastors, 
We're helping through the pastors. We're helping to feed thousands of people, literally thousands of people in the war zones of Ukraine. Uh, it's clothing, it's food, it's medicines, it's uh, homemade candles in some cases. Uh, during winter, it was heaters and stoves that we were able to provide but the needs continue. Uh, there are some churches, went past, uh, some homes that have been damaged, and we're trying to help uh, uh, some of them to fix these homes where uh, roofs have been damaged and uh, windows have been taken out. And we need your help for that. We've already helped several situations. We would like to help additional situations like this. Um, we've... Uh, um, we've got many different requests that continue to come in, and we could only do that through the support that you provide to Global Vision Ministry. So I want to thank you in advance. Um, when you sow in this ministry, you're sowing in fertile soil in the nations of the world. And let me tell you, and Sister Marcy can tell you, she uh, uh, her parents had a farm, and if you've got fertile soil, things grow a lot easier than in, the, in that harsh soil like we have here in California. But uh, even here, with watering, all things are possible. But let me tell you, I say that to say is that the Bible does say, know those that work among you. And um, the pastors that we're working with in Ukraine, for example, they are pastors that we have known in some cases for 30 years. And uh, well, they are people that we know, we trust, we've been with them, we've worked with them, we've helped them plant churches. Uh, many of them we taught in our Bible schools. And so these are men and women of God that are trustworthy. And every dollar that is sent is accounted for. We do get photographs. We do get uh, uh, information where the money is going when we send it. It is being directed to feed people, to rescue people that have to be evacuated in some very difficult war zone areas. There's less of that being happening right now because people are pretty much there where they are, but occasionally we're still evacuating people. But also there are so many, so many that have been displaced and uh, we minister to these in Ukraine, in Poland, and they are all over the world right now. But our focus has been the frontline zones of Ukraine. If God speaks to you, you want to be a part of this, uh, so into this, so into this ministry, but so into this very uh, unique and very crucial need. We're not just helping financially, but this financial aid, what is happening is through the humanitarian relief efforts, many, many people have turned their lives over to Jesus Christ. And literally thousands have come to know Christ as a savior. And it is thanks to you and thanks to all who have helped us to help those that cannot help themselves during this hour of need. So thank you so much. And you can help by going to our web, uh, web page right now, Global Vision Ministries dot org not dot com but dot org global vision ministries or you could send a check to p.o box 5377 el dorado hills california 95762 we are a 501c3 nonprofit organization recognized by the internal revenue service as a a uh, uh, religious uh, corporation, a nonprofit charity, and uh, you're giving, uh, we can issue you a tax deductible receipt here in the United States of America. Thank you for helping us. Thank you for those who have given and continue to give. May God recompense you as only he can. And let me tell you, if you give a cup of water to a prophet, you will not lose your reward, but many of you have done much more than a cup of water, and I know that you will not lose your reward. Uh, Sister Marcy, let us pray for America and Canada. Let's pray for the nations of the world. God is answering prayer, and, and that's one thing I wanted to mention. You had mentioned some people get disappointed. Oh, God has not answered prayer. He has. He is answering prayer. And in, in talking to these pastors in Ukraine, how many times they thanked us for praying for them. They said, God has been answering your prayers. 
and, and they shared miracles of how God provided, how God protected, how God intervened so many times thanks to prayer. So you may not be seeing the answer to your prayer. Do not let the devil lie to you to think that God is not answering the prayer simply because you have not seen it. God is answering prayer. God is working. And your prayers and your support in Ukraine have not been in vain at all. Many good things have happened and continue to happen. Part of our team consisted of Pastor Igor, who used to be a pilot in the Soviet Air Force. Well, he's uh, formed a uh, group, a ministry group, and they're doing chaplaincy work right now, intensely visiting the frontline zones, ministering to the soldiers, and also ministering to people in those areas where uh, it's you could only get to those people through military checkpoints because they are directly in the line of fire, but they still live there. They still stay there. They've got no place to go, or they feel they've got no place to go. They've just simply stayed behind. So they're taking aid there, and they're ministering to people there and ministering to the soldiers. Pray for him. Pray for his team. Pray for all those pastors that we are working with all over Ukraine. They are doing a phenomenal, phenomenal job. But Sister Marcy, would you pray for America, for Canada, for Ukraine? Yeah. And the nations God leads you. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You've heard the words that your servant, Brother Walter, spoke, Lord, over all these nations, wh whoever is doing whatever to help, to feed, to rescue. Lord, we know that you're answering prayer. We know that. How would all those pastors stay alive like they are, except for the hand of the Lord, protection of God, and the strength that God you are giving them and we pray that you will continue and increase their strength increase their abilities increase their incomes increase those people who will and are able to give more and support the work of the lord around the world in in fact in poland with all the uh, refugees coming there and to canada and to the united states the refugees who have come, Lord, meet their needs, meet their needs, not only physically, but also spiritually, that they will give their hearts to you, Lord, that they will be filled with your spirit, that they will serve you and love you. And Lord Jesus, we just pray for Canada. We pray for the United States, Central and South America. And again, uh, Cuba, Bahamas, around the world. We pray for the nations of the world. Like Daniel did. He didn't say, oh, Lord, I'm just only one person. No, he just set himself to pray for the nation. And we pray for our nation, oh, God, that you will begin to unravel things that should not be happening. And you begin to put in, in order, Lord, and replace like the cells of our body. The old cells are sent away. and discarded and the new cells that are growing behind the old ones are not noticeable at first but then in six or seven weeks you begin to feel awesome because you have new cells lord and so that's how you function in a nation there are old cells that are that need to be discarded but there are new cells behind them that are developing by your spirit and by your power. And we pray that for Canada, the United States, for Europe, for, for Asia, for Africa and around the world, Australia, Hawaii, the islands. In Jesus' name, we declare that the new cells, we mean the new people, the new rulers, the new ones that can be elected are being fed by you and grown by you, Lord, to be healthy and proper so that the nation will be blessed. The nations of the world will be blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Father, we take spiritual authority over the forces of Satan that would like to derail this nation from your God-given plans and purposes. And in the name of Jesus Christ, we bring down those strongholds of the enemy trying to destroy this nation, and we declare that America shall be saved. We declare that Jesus Christ is Lord over the United States of America, over Canada, over Mexico, over Central and South America, over the Caribbean nations, over the African mm. continent, over Europe, over Asia, over the South Pacific, the Middle East. And Father, we lift up Israel and we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. In Jesus' name, mm. amen and amen. Thank you for joining us. Keep tuning in here. Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. East Coast time. And we do the replay at 6.30 p.m. Pacific, 9.30 p.m. East Coast time. For those of you that cannot join us during the daytime, you can join us in the evening. Thank you for joining us. Share this broadcast. And remember, do not look at how big your problem may seem. Look at how much bigger Christ truly is. He is greater than any need, any problem that you may be facing, and he has not changed. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God richly bless you.